let me see if I've got this straight. A guy named Leonard Kaplan from New York sees our article in the newspaper. He flies down from New York to see our show. After the show's over, he talks to Travis and offers him a job at the Castle Theater in New York. Mr. Wheeler calls the theater to find out more about it, Kaplan, everything checks out. Then, Travis himself calls you, Rudy, and Jamie last Saturday from New York. Now, this Shields guy says that he's the entertainment director for the Castle Theater, and he's never heard of Kaplan or Travis? Exactly. Well, that doesn't add up. It doesn't add up at all. You know, this whole thing hasn't seemed right to me from the start. I don't understand. What's going on? I wish I knew. Who are you calling? The Castle Theater again. Yes, ma'am, I'd like to speak with Mr. Al Shields in entertainment, please. She's putting me through. Yes, Mr. Al Shields, please. No, ma'am, I'm not auditioning for anything. I'm looking for an actor named Travis Connors. Pardon me? What, isn't Mr. Shields right there? I just spoke with him a moment ago. Yeah, but ma'am, she hung up. What'd she say? She said he wasn't there. Who wasn't there? Neither one of them. She said Mr. Shields wasn't there and that Travis wasn't there. Wait a second. She said Travis wasn't there? Yeah. So that means he is there. Remember, Shields said he had never heard of Travis, and she says he isn't there. So if she says he isn't there, then that means he must be there in order for him to not be there. You follow me? Yeah, I follow you, I, I think. No, you're right. So Travis is there. Well, why did Shields say he never heard of him? You got me. Oh, this is Wild Gates. What's going on? I don't know. But the Lord knows. God knows exactly what's going on. Well, I wish he'd let us in on it, because I really want to know. Yeah, that makes two of us. So now you guys know what we know. This is really weird. Yeah, something's going on. Yeah, but what? We don't know. And Travis hasn't called. Just the one night after last week's show. And we can't call him because his old cell phone doesn't work, and. He hasn't gotten a new one yet. Or oh, if he has, he hasn't called us yet and given us the number. Well, what can we do? There's not anything we can do. I mean, I called up there this morning and left my name and number. I think we just need to be patient and see how God works this out. That's really all we can do. I agree. Uh, look, not to change gears, but uh, we've got a few more actors coming in for auditions today, so I need you guys ready to drop what you're doing and come watch. No problem, Rudy. And how are the scenes coming for this week? Um. They're coming along, Rudy. Yeah, Rudy. Pretty much got it under control. Yep. Got them sort of, kind of almost close to being done, Rudy. Is that so? <laughs> God. Look, I know it's been confusing this week, but the show must go on, all right? We know, Rudy. Yeah, we're working on our stuff, Rudy. Honest. I believe you, but I'll believe you better when I can walk by sight and not by faith. Okay, look. By the end of the day, we'll have all the scenes written for this week's show. How's that? That's great if it can be done. No problemo, right guys? No problem. Easy as pie. Piece of cake. I don't need pie or cake, I just need the scenes done. Consider it done. Case closed. Benito. Piece of cake. Okay, I feel better. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys, let's get to work. Let's make Rudy feel better. Yes, yeah, let's. Hey, Gates, you got a minute? Sure. I need you to help me with this scene. What you need? Well, actually, I need you to read it and let me know if you think it's gonna play. Oh, so you want my expert opinion to know if a scene that you have written is gonna play? You got it. Well, now, has anybody else seen it yet? Nope, your eyes are the first to fall upon it. So, Rudy and Andy and Kelly have not seen it yet? You are correct. So, if they haven't seen it, that means that I get the privilege of being the first one to read it. You are correct again, sir. And uh, who is the character or who are the characters who will play this particular scene? If you read the script, you'll see the names of Jamie and Gates. Jamie and Gates. 
So that means that you and I are going to do this thing together. Boy, you catch on fast. Yeah, I know. I have a gift of putting things together like that. Uh, so now you want me to read it? Yep, uh, unless you have a few more questions. Oh, no, I don't have any questions. I mean, I was coming in here to get me a drink of water, but I can quench my thirst a little later after I sit down and read your scene. You know what, Gates? I've got an idea. I think I can arrange it for you to read that script and quench your thirst at the same time. You can arrange that? Mm-hmm. Just sit tight and start reading. <laughs> Hey, this is funny, man. You think so? Yeah, this is funny. <laughs> this is good. Who wrote it for you? <laughs> now, this is gonna play, and I'm glad you picked me to play the other role. Well, you know what, Gates? I didn't have much of a choice. You see, I needed two guys, and, well, Kelly is a woman, and so is Andy. Although she does have a name that might confuse people until they see her. Yeah, some people might think that Andy is an Andrew, but our Andy is an Andy. Correct. You know, Mr. Wheeler was right. This show does need three actors and two actresses. Yeah. It'd probably work with two actors and three actresses, but it just seems like we need that odd person. Uh, Jamie, we already have that odd person. You. That's odd. I was thinking the same exact thing about him. Joanna. Hey. Have you got information on when the actors are coming in today? I've got one guy coming in after lunch, two lined up for mid-afternoon, and Mr. Wheeler might have somebody coming in later. So that's four. Anybody else? Not that I know of at this time. Okay. How are auditions going? Uh, okay. <laughs> you seen anybody you liked? We've seen a lot of people. Some of them, one of them, pretty good. I don't know. Mm. Well, we'll see these three or four more. You never know. Right. Got a scene for you, Mr. Gates. Well, just a second there, little lady. I'm almost done with one myself. What are you working on? Well, I'm writing a scene about a guy who's doing some detective work, trying to find out where someone is. Oh, like maybe a guy who works in a theater who's trying to find out where another guy is who worked in the same theater? Well, not exactly, but sorta. Speaking of that, have you heard anything from anyone yet? Not yet. The mystery continues. Yep, and the mystery is creating more and more anxiety for me. Patience has never been one of my better qualities. Hey, buddy, if they handed out a Miss Impatience of the Year award, I would so get it. <laughs> you struggle with waiting, too? Probably the hardest thing for me to do. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. You know, I was reading an article about this preacher one time. It said that Christians love marching orders, but the posture that they find most difficult is to be still and wait on God. Ain't it the truth? God loves patience and faith. In fact, they're two of God's biggies. You know, if we have true faith, we will wait on God and know that he's going to do the best for any situation. That was really well put, Gates. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now quit making me wait and look at my scene, will ya? Got a couple of more scripts for you. Why, thank you, sir. One is Andy's and the other one is mine. Now, hers is good. <laughs> mine is just so-so. Oh, Gates, all your scripts are good. Well, I appreciate you saying that, but this one is so-so. I'm sure it's fine. It's just been hard to keep my mind on things since my boy Travis has been gone. It's been really hard. Gates, that's understandable. You guys were best friends, and when a best friend leaves, it's hard. Yeah, it's really hard. I had that happen to me once. You did? Yep. And it crushed me. It was my friend Sandy Ellison, my very best friend. We did everything together. We got along really great. We never got into any arguments or fights. And then one day she had to move. Moved five states away. It must have been really hard. It was. So how long ago did your friend leave? I mean, when was it? It was quite a few years ago. Like? Two or three? A little more than that. 
four or five? No. How long then? Sandy left when we were in the third grade. <laughs> Joanna, you had me believing that this was a friend of yours that left recently in your adult life. Hey, Sandy leaving was the most traumatic thing that ever happened to me. Well, if that's the most traumatic thing that's ever happened to you, then you're in good shape. Yeah, I guess. Boy, do we have a lot of fun together. Well, maybe you should give her a call sometime, and I hope you get a hold of her. I want to talk to Travis once since he left. I mean, we've been trying to get a hold of him, but we just haven't been able to. There is something strange going on up there. Why do you say that? Well, it's, it's too long a story to try to explain it, but something just doesn't sit right with me, and it hasn't from the start. I mean, I, I've got too many questions and, and not enough answers. Like what? Well, like, like how come Kaplan came all the way down here to get an actor when he could have found a hundred Travis Connors right there in his own backyard? Hmm. I never thought of that. There's got to be more to this story than Kaplan let on. There's got to be a reason why he wanted Travis. Gates, you've got me a little concerned here. Oh, I'm sorry, Joanna. I don't mean to do that. It's going to be all right. I've got to go. We've got another audition coming in, and we need to see it. Take care. I will. You too, Joanna. Okay, everybody. This is Jordan Nearpass. He's a fellow actor here in the local area and a Christian. He's going to be doing a monologue for us, so just whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. Um, I'd like to do a story that everyone's familiar with from the Bible, but uh, I'd like to try to do it a little bit differently and bring in a couple of different characters. There must have been 5,000 of us. And that was just counting the men. When we was all out there listening to this feller teach and uh, got to be late in the afternoon and we we're starting to get kind of hungry. And all of a sudden, people in front of me just start passing back these fish sandwiches. Well, I couldn't see where they was coming from. I mean, there was not even a fish market around or, or there was no water or nothing, but we still kept getting more and more of these fish sandwiches. You know, I'm a Pharisee. So naturally, we were standing in the back. <laughs> And this fellow starts giving away these free fish sandwiches. Some people will do anything to get a crowd. <laughs> but I couldn't see where he was getting them from because naturally I was in the back, so I couldn't see at all. I tell you, them was the best fish sandwiches I ever had. I mean, I think I had like three of them myself. <laughs> I, I mean, there was not even a fire up there to cook them on. I didn't know where they was coming from. In fact, they were so good, my wife who was with me, she wanted me to go up and ask that man for the recipe. <laughs> well, you know, after a brief consultation with my comrades, we decided that, of course, this man, Jesus, was a fraud and a charlatan. I mean, nobody can produce fish sandwiches out of thin air, can they? <laughs> of course not. Some of the little people that were down in front were convinced that they were witnessing a miracle. <laughs> How ridiculous. Some people are so gullible. Well, all I can say that man must have been pretty special. I mean, to be able to produce fish sandwiches out of thin air like that, I mean, most of us, we couldn't believe our eyes. And I guess kind of that's what he wanted us to do, was believe in him. But sadly, not many people did. And I find that hard to believe. Please be sure he gets my message. Right. He knows the number. Okay. Thank you. What's up, Gates? Well, she said that she'd give him the message, but she still hasn't seen him yet. This is so odd. Where could he be? I don't know. Well, look, I'm sorry to change the subject, but we need to talk about the auditions we've been seeing. Oh, sorry, Rudy. No, it's okay. Um, of all the ones you've seen, is there anybody that stands out to you in particular? Yeah, that uh, guy that we saw today do the Bible story. What was his name? Um, Jordan? Yeah, Jordan. He was good. I like what he did. Yeah, he was good. Did you like him the best? I did. How about you, Kelly? Yeah, I agree. Jordan first, then Ralph second. I think this is the best that we've seen so far. Now, which one was Ralph? The very first one. Oh, yeah. So how about you? I vote the same. Okay, so Jordan first, then Ralph. Yeah. 
Uh, Joanna said we've already seen all the actors in the area that are interested. There may be a couple more, but... So we've pretty much got to make a decision. That's pretty much it. There's Travis. Travis! You are expecting a call from Travis? Oh, sorry, Mr. Wheeler. Yeah, sort of. I left a message for him to call me. Well, tell him I said hello when he calls. I will, sir. Look, the reason I'm calling Gates is I got an actor I want you to see before you guys make your decision. The problem is the fellow can't be here till around 7 tonight. Uh, do you think everybody would be willing to stay to see this guy? Uh, sure, Mr. Willow, no problem. I'll tell you what, uh, why don't you guys go out and get a bite to eat? My treat. Sir, that won't be necessary. Well, you gotta eat, don't you? Okay, sir. <laughs> All right, go on down to 5th and put it on my tab. I'll give him a call and tell him you're coming. Okay, Mr. Willow, thank you. By the way, uh, how are auditions going? They're going okay. We were just talking about them when you called. Well, this guy who's coming tonight comes with a real good recommendation. You know, he might be just what we're looking for. Sounds good. Hmm. All right, tell everybody I said thanks for staying late. I will, Mr. Willow. Uh, thank you very much. That was Mr. Wheeler. He's got another actor coming tonight at 7 and wants to know if we can stay and see him. I can stay. Me too. Yep. Yeah, no problem. And he says he appreciates us staying late and wants us to go over to 5th and get a bite to eat. He's treating. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah, it's only a little after 5. We can get back here by 7. I'm game. Sounds like a plan. Hey, what you gonna get, Gates? I don't know. Whatever's on the menu. <laughs> well, Gates, they have quite a few entrees on the menu. Well, I'll have to get them all then. the fifth actor on stage by next week's show. I mean, we're gonna have to make a decision by tomorrow. Because whoever we choose is gonna have to come in, learn the ropes. I said we go with the guy that did that Bible story. Jordan. Yes. Hey, everybody. So, I called Mr. Wheeler and told him I'd be flying in at 6. He came and picked me up and told me to be here at 7. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? He told us to be here at 7, too. He said he had another audition for us to see. <laughs> <laughs> now, that takes care of your side of the story, but we've still got some unanswered questions. Right. You have no idea what's been going on here. Yeah, first question. Now, the other night when we called, there was some guy named Shields who got on the phone and said he didn't even know you or Kaplan. Now, why did he say that? Al Shields. He's the other entertainment director for the theater. Well, actually, he's the assistant. He and Mr. Kaplan got into an argument about Brandon, and he was pretty upset about that. So that's probably why he said that. Who's Brandon? Brandon Lindley. He's the lead actor in the show that they're doing. You see this... Brandon Guy is a very big name actor, and come to find out, he had been complaining about his contract. And I kind of look like Brandon, so they brought me up there to be a replacement for him, unless he changed his attitude. I wasn't brought up there to be in the show. I was brought up there to be used to keep Brandon in the show. I'm sorry, Travis. But you've got a contract. You can't just leave, can you? You can if you never signed it. What? I never signed a contract. I went up there, but I hadn't signed anything yet. Does Mr. Kaplan know you're gone? Yeah. I talked to him before I left. What did he say? Nothing, really. I just told him I didn't think this was for me. Was he mad? No. He seemed to be okay with it. Why is that? Because I think they came to an agreement with Brandon, and I didn't matter to them anymore. Look, guys, God has taught me a great lesson in this situation. I realized that I was already where God wanted me to be. 
In our shows, we proclaim the message of Jesus Christ, and to me, there is no higher calling than that. But I left for New York because I thought that was the big time. The production that they were doing with the sets and the lights and all the flash. But one thing was missing. They were not doing it for the glory of God. And so in my foolishness, I left this show to be in that one. And I was wrong. And so I want you guys to know that I am truly sorry for that. And if you can forgive me and take me back, there's no greater place I'd rather be. I just got one thing to say, man. Welcome home, brother. Welcome home.